X303 Prometheus. This is Bluebrick's target set 106837. It was released in April 2024 for about 150 euros. This construction block set consists of 2,229 pieces, which are compatible to bricks by other construction blocks companies like Lego, Mega, Kobe, and so on. This set reached me with a delay of five days. According to DHL, the parcel didn't fulfill their shipping requirements. But for some reason they only noticed this at uh, the same day when the parcel was planned to arrive at my home. They had already uh, put it in the delivery truck, but <laughs> instead of uh, giving the parcel to me, they put a note in the tracking history that there's something wrong with the package and that they are going to return it to the sender. Well, a few days later, this parcel had arrived in uh, one of these DHL centers. I don't know what they do there, uh, sorting all the parcels or whatever. And well, luckily, they didn't return it to the sender. They still wrote in the tracking history that uh, the parcel doesn't fulfill their um, their shipping requirements but for some reason they tried once again to send the parcel to me and yeah luckily this time everything worked well well <laughs> enough about my little shipping adventure now let's get back to the set itself. So far I already showed you Bluebrick's first Stargate ship in minifigure scale, the F302, which I have slightly modified to give it a canopy. I'm still trying to add some stickers to make it look more like um, the real ship, uh, like we saw it in the TV series. And I also showed you two mid-size scale models, the Aurora and the Beliskner. By the way, there is a little problem with the Beliskner, which uh, wasn't a problem when I did build the set, so I didn't talk about it in the video. Back in my video, this dish here was interlocked with the rest of the build. But in the meantime, this little ring here, which connects the dish to this stud here, has cracked. That's stupid. Luckily, the set came with enough additional rings, so I will replace uh, this ring here with one of the additional rings. And there's also another problem which I didn't notice. It's not really a problem, but uh, just let me show it to you. I didn't notice it myself, but um, YouTube user um, MemeLord was talking about in the commands of my um, video about the Beliskner. So this goes here. I just accidentally dropped this piece. So you can see that we got um, here this powertrain or whatever this is supposed to be. And Meme Lord noticed that these blue pieces here are not all on the same level as they should be. It's not visible here, but when we remove this curved slope here, you can see that we get here a one by one round plate. And yeah, it's not on the same level as all these other pieces here. There is a offset of maybe about half a plate, I would say. It's not really a problem. This is not a problem structurally because um, 
these gray parts here are interlocked with the hull of the ship. The blue things aren't really interlocked. And so everything stays perfectly in place. And this piece, this round plate, also isn't visible in the completed build because you place this rounded slope above the piece. So the offset isn't visible at all. The blue piece isn't vis uh, visible at all. But <laughs> it's simply a bit annoying to know that this blue powertrain is not uh, one single level that we get this little step here. It's, it's a bit stupid. Maybe blue bricks can change it when they re-release the set. The Prometheus is blue bricks first display sized model. They sell minifigure scale models like the F302. They sell mini models. Well, there are no mini models in their Stargate lineup so far, but we got a lot of mini uh, scale models uh, in the Stargate, uh, in the Star Trek um, lineup. Then they sell mid sized models. I showed you the Aurora and the Beliskner. And now we also get display sized models. There are a lot of display sized models in their Star Trek lineup, but this is the first display sized model in their Stark 8 lineup. Display sized model simply means um, it's the biggest sort of models they sell. Well, the Prometheus was Earth's first um, interstellar battlecruiser. And as you can see here, it's, um, the ship is part of the X-303 class. Actually, it's the only ship which was built of this class. And I think X-303 means that it's a um, prototype. And please correct me if I'm wrong, but I think once this ship has entered uh, Earth's Starfleet, the class was renamed to BC-303. So this means our model here shows the ship during a time period when it still was a prototype ship. But... <laughs> Those are just semantics, I think. Uh, it didn't look much differently from the outside. Maybe there was another print on the ship. We could read there BC-303 later on. I can't really remember. So when we have a look at the, at the box, you can see that it's quite colorful. It's me it means we got a Pluprix Pro set here. Unlike the special sets, which come in colorless, boring boxes, we got, uh, yeah, a Scar a Stargate printed on the box and a computer-rendered image of the final build. Well, at least we get to see the ship. The complete build is visible on the backside. There we also get to see, besides the ship, the stand and uh, this little plaque here with Stargate. We also get to know the dimensions of the completed build. It's almost half a meter by 22 centimeters by 25 centimeters. So this is really not a tiny model. I'm looking forward to build this. Let's open the box now. Inside the huge box we find these two smaller white boxes here. One says box A and the other one says box B. But um, this doesn't actually really matter. They, uh, this is simply done for the production process. The bags with the bricks aren't uh, sorted to box A and box B. We have to look for the, bag, uh, for the bags in both of the boxes. As I said before, this is a pro set. So we got printed building instructions and the bricks come in numbered bags. 
Each number stands for one building section. And if we have a look at the instructions, there we can see that we got six different building sections. I'm going to start now with opening all the bags of building section one. And then I will start with step 1-1. I will come back to you as soon as I reach an interesting step or something simply doesn't work as intended. Step 1-24. We have assembled the stand and now it's time to build the plaque of which this little stargate is a part. As you can see, the stargate consists of um, these curved tiles which are printed and also attached to a 8x8 plate. They are pre-attached to this plate. I have no idea how Bluebricks doesn't get into trouble when using these plates because uh, this piece is still protected by Lego. Maybe Bluebricks has some deal with Lego, I don't know. Well, um, these tiles are pre-attached to the plate because this means you can print on all the tiles in one single go. And yeah, this results in a way better print than when you um, print every single tile individually because when you do it like this, the tiles are already aligned perfectly. We have to detach now all the tiles from this um, plaque plate, which we don't need any longer. When we have a look at the instructions, they even want us to throw this piece away, which we are not going to do. This is going into my collection. And yeah, when, when we have detached the pieces, we have to assemble them to, um, uh, on, this, on these two plates here. We don't use this because um, blue looks better, because you can see these um, tiles are translucent. And it simply looks better when we have a blue background. The thing is that they want us to start with the center tile. And yeah, it's more or less impossible to remove the center piece. Maybe you can stick something in there and uh, when you push, it should uh, detach the piece in the center, but it's just annoying. I'm going to detach all the pieces and then, um, yeah, I will start from the rim and go into the center. And when I have detached all the pieces, I can simply take the center piece and place it on these two plates. In one of the videos, I think it's uh, the product video of the set here, Bluebricks also uh, recognized that it's a bit unfortunate to uh, start with the centerpiece. In their upcoming sets or in future sets, they uh, will, um, yeah, they will change uh, the order in the instructions, and maybe then they will um, start from the rim and. Uh, in the final step of assembling the Stargate, we have to place the centerpiece. This will make things easier. All right, then now let me assemble the Stargate. Step 1-29. One of the pieces we are going to use in the step is this inverted bracket here. The design of this piece is still protected by Lego. Step 1-32. The first building section is complete. So far we have built this stand-plaque combination. 
Now we can go on with the second building section in which we are going to build, yeah, I guess uh, the ship's structural core. It seems to be a technic construction. We will see. By the way, in one of the bags of the first building section, I found this uh, brick separator. It's always funny that all these Stargate and Star Trek sets come with these giraffe prick separators. <laughs> it's, it's just strange. It doesn't fit into this sci-fi setting, but, well, better to have a prick separator than none at all. 2-22 and 2-23. In these steps, we are going to use more protected pieces. So we got this plate modified here, which is still protected by Lego. And we also have to use these inverted brackets here, which are still protected. So, so far we have created this Technic construction here. And you can see that we are using a lot of pieces in flat silver. This is the predominant color of the set. And yeah, sometimes we also use um, bricks which are not in flat silver, for example here white, but more interestingly these uh, light bluish gray pieces. And It might get difficult during the building process to distinguish light bluish gray from flat silver in the instructions. Luckily, Blue Bricks knows of this problem and so they marked every piece in a metallic color with a star. So you can see here all these pieces are in flat silver and they are marked with a star. Let's have a look. If we can find here a piece which is not in flat silver, is there somewhere a light bluish gray piece? Yeah, here. These pieces here are in light bluish gray and they come without star. Step 2-31. Yet another protected piece. This brick modified with two studs on the side. Step 2-51. In this step we are using pieces which, for example, the Lego company doesn't use. We got these, here, yeah, I don't know how to call them. These things are thinner than plates, but um, they got studs on both sides. These pieces are used to reverse the building direction. So you can see, for example, we have used them here. And on one side we have put a tile and yeah, there are still studs on the other side where we can place stuff on and we also have placed the slope here. Step 2-53. Here we got two more pieces to reverse the building direction. This time they come with the dimensions of plates, but with additional studs on the underside. Step 2-56. We got another protected piece. The design of this 2x2 jumper plate is still protected by the LEGO company. Step 2-58. The Prometheus is starting to take shape. Now it's time for building section 3. I just noticed that in earlier steps two protected pieces slipped through. I didn't notice them. So we got this 1x2 brick modified with two studs on the side. And here this 4x4 plate with a 2x2 hole. Step 3-4. We have built this little segment here with the help of a lot of inverted slopes. But I'm not sure if flat silver does work well with these pieces here. You can see the sides are glossy, that looks really cool. But uh, the front of those slopes is held in, uh, yeah, in a matte finishing and 
I don't know. Flat silver and matte doesn't look good. At least not for me. I prefer, uh, I prefer the glossy look. Step 3-12. This 1x2x2 brick modified with studs on the side is another protected piece. Step 3-61. This step comes with a tiny error. We have built these two segments here. And you can see that the second segment got uh, a 1x1 one one plate on the left side and a 1x1 one one plate on the right side. And uh, this segment uh, doesn't contain any one by one plates. You can see I did it correctly. So this looks exactly like shown in step 3-60. And yeah, I have built this exactly like shown here. Here are the one by one plates. But now in the next image, we are supposed to interlock this piece or this segment with this segment. And there you can see that it only shows uh, one of the one by one plates at the right position. So the left one is here, but the right one is missing. It somehow got up here at this position. It doesn't matter at all. We can simply connect these two segments and the final result will be exactly the same. But yeah, the way how we got there isn't exactly like shown in the instructions. Step 3-78. We just have completed the third building section and this is how our build looks so far. This whole thing really is becoming extremely sturdy and, yeah, surprisingly heavy. I mean, we still have to place a lot of pieces. This will be very heavy in the end. <laughs> you can also see that we already started to um, add some details, like here, or um, the engines. One thing which is a bit strange is that uh, there were some loose pieces or additional pieces in this building section. And yeah, you can see we got these axles here and we haven't used these axles at all in the whole build so far. I don't know. I was going through the instructions once again because I feared that maybe I somehow forgot to place them, but no, they aren't mentioned anywhere. We can't even find them in the inventory, which is at the end of the instructions. These pieces aren't mentioned anywhere. Strange. Well, it's better to have pieces that we don't need than to have pieces missing so it's all fine let's go on with building section four step 4-33 once again we stumble upon a piece which is still protected by the lego company this one by two plate with clip step 4-71 we have completed the fourth building section and this is what our ship looks like at the moment. I think it looks a bit like one of Star Trek's Bird of Prey without wings. <laughs> In the next building section, the fifth building section, we are going to add this part here, this tower-like part. If this was a... Uh, old sailing ship i would call it the after castle but i don't know how you call these things when we are talking about spaceships i will simply go with after castle the part which holds the bridge and so on step 5-4 they really use a lot of protected pieces in the set here is another one a bracket Step 5-32. 
in this step and also in step 5-29 we have placed these two printed panels. It's cool that we get these printed panels but in the 2E series below the X303 we don't get to read SGC but USAF for US Air Force of course. Sadly, Plubrix wasn't able to obtain uh, the rights by the US Air Force to print their name on uh, their set. And uh, this is why we get to see now these three letters here. SGC, I guess it's, it's short for uh, Stargate Command. Well, of course, I would prefer to have a um, correct panel here. That's why I ordered my own printed pieces uh, when the set was announced. When the set was announced we only got to see a um, computer rendered image of the final set. In this image I wasn't sure if I uh, see a panel or a tile here. Stupidly I decided that I saw a tile and yeah this is why we get uh, or I got uh, the wrong pieces here now. I can't place them there. And you can also see that they are in the wrong color. When I saw the rendered image, I thought, well, the completed build uh, is in light bluish gray. But yeah, when the set arrived, I had to see that it's not in light bluish gray, but flat silver. So what to do now? Well, first of all, I was thinking, why not simply uh, remove the print of uh, the tiles or of these panels here and place stickers on there. So you can see I got uh, these stickers here. This is for this side and I got more stickers for the other side. And yeah, it might look as if the stickers are white, but no, only the background is white. The stickers actually are transparent, only the letters are uh, white. But, uh, well, I don't really like to um, damage my sets. And so I had a look online if I can't find uh, these panels anywhere. And yeah, uh, I found out that uh, uh, Gobrix also produces these uh, panels here. These um, one by four by three panels in flat silver. I ordered them in China. It's very cheap, only a few cents, but of course um, shipping from uh, Asia to Europe takes a few days. So until the um, uh, replacement panels on which I can put the stickers arrive, I will use uh, these sets here, uh, these panels here. Hopefully I will be able to replace them uh, once the build is complete because you can see we are still in the middle of the build and there will be quite a few other pieces on top of these panels. Well, wish me luck. <laughs> Step 5-83. The battle cruiser looks almost complete now, but there is still the whole sixth building section in front of us. Step 6-36. Have a look at this huge slope here. It's a 1 by 6 by 4 slope. It looks almost like an aircraft's fin. I really like this piece and we got to use not only one of them in this step. No, we are going to use quite a lot of them in this set. Step 6-39. We have built this huge segment here 
which I think is uh, the biggest segment we have built, which is not immediately attached to the ship. But now it's time to connect it with the ship. It's part of uh, the ship's superstructure. So you can see it will be placed here. And if I'm not wrong, we will go to create the same thing once more, only mirrored to place it on the other side of the ship. Step 6-85. As you can see, this step consists of four sub-steps and also the third sub-step consists of two additional sub-steps. My question is now, how does the final step have to look like? You can see here that in the second sub-step of the third sub-step, we have added to this um, negative tile a one by one plate and uh, this little one by one slope. But we somehow have to turn this whole thing around and then place it on uh, the rest of this little segment, which we have started to create in sub-step one. I can't really see where uh, the one by one plate and the slope is placed in this picture here. Also, the fourth picture doesn't really help. But luckily, we have to build the same thing once more, only mirrored. And here it's quite visible where um, those two pieces are supposed to be. So I got here my, um, uh, my segment from the step before. This means it's mirrored, so it should look like this. And here you can see that this little sub-segment sits on this segment like, like this. Step 6-93. We are almost done with the build. So I think in this step it's the last time that we will find a new protected piece. This one by one round plate with open stud is still protected by Lego. And yeah, this is one of the stranger protected pieces. A one by one round plate with closed stud isn't protected. Step 6 101. The build is complete. There are still a few pages left in the instructions. But we are going to talk about what's going on here later. For now, let's have a look at our completed battle cruiser. I think it's a great build. It's quite huge and it's really heavy. And I have to say, it looks it comes very close to what we see in the TV series. This is a nice set. So, what kind of details can we find? Up here we got uh, the bridge, which consists of those printed tiles. We got printed windows. And, yeah, we can find more uh, printed windows on the ship's superstructure. There are also a lot of brick-built windows on both of the sides. We get to see some minor creebling on the ship's hull and yeah, what else? Here in the back there are the um, sublight engines. I think those look quite cool. There is a pot on each side of the ship which, uh, yeah, each of those pots uh, uh, houses a um, uh, one of the um, hyperspace emitters. In later episodes, when the ship is refitted, 
these pots also house um, hangar bays here and here in front of the sublight emitters. But uh, in this prototype stage of the ship, there are uh, at this at this moment there are no um, hangar bays here. It's only for the um, hyperspace emitters. We got a uh, hangar bay up here. I think um, the refitted ship also got more of the scribbling and the details here in the front of the ship just look a bit different. And I just had a quick, a quick look at one of those later episodes and I think that the refitted ship doesn't have a print here. But... Uh, this ship here is still in its prototype stage, so I'm still going to um, replace this print here with a sticker um, which says US Air Force instead of SGC, just like uh, we saw on TV. This whole set here um, comes with such a great stand. I think this is uh, the best stand I uh, had on the table so far. So it's better than all the other um, Stargate and also Star Trek stands I uh, had built so far. Let's see if I can remove the chip with just one hand. Yeah, without any problem. Let's turn around the ship. You can see how sturdy it is, it's insane. <laughs> and yeah, when we have a look at the stand, you can see that there are these flat tiles here on top of the whole thing. We don't have to interlock the ship with the stand. We just slide these, yeah, these things here inside those holes. And the whole Things stays in place thanks to gravity, and I think this is such a good a good solution. You can see that it's very easy to detach the ship from the stand. You don't have to fear that uh, some of the bricks stay in place where in places where they shouldn't stay or something like that. This connection is just perfect, and yeah. The stand is, is quite modest. Of course, uh, the, little, the little Stargate is an eye catcher. It's a um, it's a Milky Way Stargate, and there's this plaque attached to the Stargate where we can uh, see uh, the name of the ship that it's the Prometheus. But uh, the rest of uh, the stand is very modest, and I think this is just perfect because. The star of the set is um, the battle cruiser, not the stand. The stand is just there to hold the ship in place. Well, here is the underside of the ship. And yeah, there are not too many details to see. But there's something I want to show you. I said before that there are some pages left in the instructions and yeah, this has a reason. So if you don't want to put uh, this, uh, sh this ship on a stand and I don't know what you want to do with it, just whoosh it around or maybe you want to display it somewhere below your ceiling or whatever. And uh, yeah, if you don't want to use the stand, you can close these holes here. And therefore, we have created these two little segments here. You put one of the segments in this hole and the other segment in, in this hole. And now uh, the hull is closed. But it's difficult to get these things out again. And, well, we got some help. We can find this um, Technic brick here in the set. And yeah, 
we simply have to place this hole here or connect this hole here or one of the holes with uh, this jumper plate like this and then we should be able to pull out the segment again <laughs> and hmm, it doesn't seem to work yeah that's rubbish doesn't work over here i haven't done it before actually i just hoped that uh, the instructions uh, weren't lying to me but oh here it works perfectly but you can see that um, the blue one by one prick still is stuck in here yeah that's not a good solution Let's have a look at the instructions again. Maybe I did something wrong. He has shown how we connect the um, segments with the ship. And here we can see how to remove them again. Yeah, I think I did everything as shown as in the instructions. Hmm. All right, I will uh, look for some other tool to remove the uh, pieces. I will come back to you. Forget about the stupid blue brick. Just use tweezers. This here works perfectly fine. All right, as you can see, I have removed these covers here and I have put uh, the battle cruiser back on its stand. So far, this is um, the biggest Stargate set. And yeah, it takes the longest to assemble simply because of uh, the amount of used pieces. But at the same time, it's the easiest set to assemble. There are no complicated building techniques used here. And uh, the individual building sections each have the perfect size, so you are not wasting much time with looking for uh, the right piece. It's a bigger set, but I think it's still perfect for beginners. The build is absolutely sturdy. Only um, these triangular pieces here where are they here and also on the other side can become a problem during the building process the clutch power of those tiles is perfectly fine but uh, they are only interlocked with one single stud and uh, this means when you are building stuff in the proximity of um, these triangular tiles you often just rip them off and it's just annoying every time to reattach them just ignore those uh, two tiles and uh, place them once the build is complete there were some um, more unused pieces in the last building section so you can see here we got a lot of pieces left over which were not used at all during the whole building process especially these uh, chain links here in one of or in the product uh, in the product video of uh, the set blue bricks set that they had to plan uh, that they had planned to um, create other engines but uh, it didn't simply didn't work out and uh, so they had to use other engines they corrected everything in the instructions but i guess the uh, set was already in production and yeah so they included pieces for the new engines but uh, didn't bother to take out uh, the pieces which are not needed any longer and yeah so we end up with these additional pieces maybe these two axles here 
which were not used in one of the earlier building sections, also belong to the engines. I don't know. The pieces used in the set are not Lego quality, but uh, they are totally fine. They are manufactured by Xingbao, which we can read on the box. Let's have a look here. Yeah, you can see manufactured by Xingbao. And yeah, those Xingbao bricks nowadays are absolutely fine. Absolutely no problem with the uh, clutch power, but they still got these ugly injection holes. Especially on uh, the bricks uh, studs. So you can see here that um, these wedges come with ugly injection holes and also this piece here. Luckily, more or less, the whole build is covered with tiles. So these are the only pieces which uh, show studs. Of course, these pieces are also on the opposite side. And yeah, there are some more pieces with ugly injection holes like these things here and especially the, um, the gold bars. But uh, yeah, these are the only pieces. I think when it's too annoying for you, you can uh, replace these pieces by, uh, with pieces by other manufacturers. I think Gobrix, for example, produces um, pieces in this color. Well, the instructions were absolutely easy to follow. I think there was only one tiny neglectable error, but everything else was just perfect. Really, the only things annoying about the set are the injection holes and, yeah, that uh, removing the covers for uh, the stand doesn't really work with this brick, but... I'm not going to use these covers anyway, so I don't care. Well, I think it's my favorite Stargate set so far. I had much fun building it and it's a nice display set. But I'm really going to avoid to assemble um, a set in flat silver for a while. 